Britain is a nation of animal lovers, but some are a little more obsessed than others. That is my TV, most definitely. An old pounds grabbing, it's anything that moves. Brilliant. Doesn't get any better than that, mate. These people go to extraordinary lengths to get closer to the animals they love. Go. I'm going to join them. I'll be hunting high and low for the UK's most adorable creatures. Oh, sweet. I also want to make these people's dreams come true. That is just amazing. So I'm calling in the big guns. Oh look, Warwick is already here. I've managed to woo some of the world's best wildlife camera people away from David Attenborough. I'm sure he won't mind. I haven't been this excited since I got shut in a horse box with Prince Harry. And I know this adventure is going to be just as much fun. Well, you probably don't expect to see me on a nature program, but the truth is, I've been fascinated by wildlife since I was a little boy. And I used to live in London, but now I'm in the country. Come on, girls. I've been able to rekindle my passion. Do I miss my showbiz chums? Well, of course I do. Simon Cowell never calls anymore. Not that he ever did. So I'm taking myself off on tour to meet some new friends. People who love wildlife as much as I do. People I affectionately refer to as Britain's nature nuts. And I'm taking this film crew with me. Maureen, get in the car. Try not to scratch. When forced to travel with Riff Raff, it's important to establish the pecking order right away. We're going on a trip. I don't want you to touch me, look at me, breathe on me, or speak to me. The first stage of my grand adventure is taking me to Walsall in the West Midlands in search of Britain's favourite animal, the hedgehog. I love these little pin cushions, but sadly I've only ever seen the poor darling squashed in the middle of the road. Nature nut Joan Lockley has dedicated her life to them, helping over 1,000 get back into the wild. I've got a high-tech plan help her find out where they go when she releases them. But worryingly, at the moment, Joan is at the vets with her tame hedgehog, Sally. I do hope it's nothing serious. A trip to the vets, Maureen. Perhaps you could have a look at your mange while we're here. Stop that awful itching and scratching that you do all the time. Hello, Joan. Hello, Julian. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, you too. What are you doing here at the vet? Um, bought Sally. Right. Sally isn't well. He's uh, got diarrhoea and he isn't eating and I'm worried about him. Don't look so worried. Could I meet him? Of course you can. I mean, I realise he's not having a great day. Sally. There he is. Hello, Sally. Would you like to be picked up? Yes. Come on then. Let me help this in case he has an incident. Which he could well do. How long has he had diarrhoea? Couple of weeks. Oh no. That's about how long you've had it, Maureen. <laughs> no, she suffers. I blame her diet. <laughs> Nothing but plums. <laughs> You're terrible to him. Morning, noon and night. <laughs> Sally feels less prickly than I thought, and I'm already getting attached to this nonchalant chap, chewing away like a fairground worker. Well, it's all dry on the western front at the moment. At least it was have cleaned him before we came. How do you clean a hedgehog's bottom? With great difficulty. So a damp sponge? Yes. Yeah. Here you are, a little tip for you. Mm. Yes. We'll be sorted out in no time. I hope so. I hope so. He's very special. This nature nut is a regular at the vet, and she's got a stronger stomach than me. Have a look. That's not a pretty sight, no, is it? it? It's not very nice at all, is it? He doesn't seem to be in much discomfort in his tummy. He's not mm -hmm. yelling at all, pushing back when I'm pressing it. He yes. doesn't seem particularly dehydrated, so I don't mm -hmm. think we have to resort to the fluids. Um, but I would definitely get him on quite a long course of antibiotics. Oh, sir. He's taking this very well, isn't he? He is very good. Very good. But people find a hedgehog in distress and they bring it to you. Yes. Yeah. It's a marvellous thing to do, isn't it? Fantastic, yeah. I mean, 
uh, Jones known far and wide around here. We get a lot of people bringing them in and yeah. knowing that Joan can help. Do you have an OBE or anything yet? No, not yet. We well, just need the um, What's that? Cadbury's dairy milk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him home and give him his antibiotics. Okay. Oh, it's a bit bigger than a hedgehog, isn't it? It is. It's a lot bigger than a hedgehog. Joan's obsession began when she discovered a hedgehog on the lawn one morning. Each year, she cares for hundreds of injured and orphaned strays. And where does Joan keep her hedgehogs? In her back garden. In the hospital. Oh, so it's all been specially built for you, all this? Yes, it has. So we can get as many hedgehogs in as possible. Can we get one out? Okay. There you go. Show it to Maureen. Hedgehogs instinctively raise their prickles and curl into a ball when they're disturbed, which is why she's wrapped around Joan's hand. Your job is is what to fatten them up. So yes, I mean. yeah. In the summer months, 450 grams, they can go back to the wild. But this time of the year, they must be at least 600 grams. So if people want to help hedgehogs that they see, what, what should they do, people watching this? Apart, if, from, apart from bring them to you. Yeah, if the golden rule is if you see a hedgehog out in the day, it's in trouble. So do you hear that? If you see a hedgehog during the day, they're not well. And it's probably best to contact your nearest hedgehog sanctuary. You don't normally see Maureen out during the day, either. No, don't you? No. She's a new nocturnal as well. She's a bit of a night gal. How do you know? Motorway service stations. Oh, yeah. After nine o'clock. Oh, yeah. I'll say no more. Oh, boy. <laughs> he looks well on here. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That'll be understandable. I'll protect you. <laughs> Are any of these ready to be? Released. That one is ready. Can we have a look at it? Yeah, of course you can. Excuse us. <laughs> this is your actual fully grown hedgehog. These hedgehogs have a pungent aroma, perhaps the result of their diet. They're insectivores, known as the gardener's friend, and usually eat slugs, snails, and beetles, although Joan relies on meaty cat food to fatten them up. The hedgehogs that aren't strong enough for life on the outside are kept until spring. This one is ready for the outside world. Definitely. Tonight? Mm. Joan has no idea where her released hedgehogs go, so as a surprise, we're going to track this big fella's progress tonight. But first, there's one thing I'm dying to do. Can we feed a hedgehog now? You want to feed a baby one? A baby one? With a syringe. Jones discovered something rather important about feeding hedgehogs. What do you do? That's it. There you go. What's going on, Jane? <laughs> you're okay. You're doing okay. Now listen carefully. Don't put out a source of ordinary cow's milk. Baby hedgehogs need special lactose-free milk. That's amazing. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> You've got the knack. I have got the knack. You can take over. Sad enough now, I think. Good enough. Mm. There you are, that's better. I'm back to sleep. No. A contented baby hedgehog. <laughs> well, I quite understand the fascination. Good. I get it. This one doesn't smell either. No. She's kept herself nice. Our much stronger hedgehog is now ready to face the world. Tonight's release site is a hedgehog-friendly garden at one of Joan's neighbours' houses, where I've arranged to meet Dr. Richard Yarnell, an expert on radio tracking hedgehogs. So, we thought, with your little chap here, we could fix this tracking device to yeah. him, and then come back in the morning and find out what he's got up to and how far he's, he's wandered. Gosh, that's super. Yeah, it's great. Now, we, we ought to test the merchandise, don't you yeah. think? Let's, let's switch it on and... Uh, Take that, go and hide somewhere and we'll come find you. Right. It's very quick to <laughs> see. <laughs> it's like a ferret, that woman. Coming, ready or not. 
It's not going to be set off by a boy in suspender belt, is it? No. No, you'll be grand. Okay. Here come Jane. Is she in this bush? No, she's not. She's down here somewhere. <laughs> so when we get close, you should hear a, a very strong signal all around, irrespective of which direction you're pointing the aerial in. And that's when you can start your visual search. Can I start my visual search? Yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> there you are. I've found Hedgehog Woman. There she is. And I don't know who enjoyed that more, you or me. The light's fading fast, so Dr. Dick takes the radio tag and prepares the hedgehog for release. It's a harmless procedure, and the hedgehog doesn't feel a thing. Let Jane have a private man. No, I no, she gets upset. Say goodbye, Jane. Don't. <laughs> Go on, my son. First steps. Born free to follow your heart. You can't. Really? <laughs> we want him to mate now. I'll well, give you a couple of minutes. <laughs> Come on, let's get you home. It's been a long day for you. It has. If we can sleep with the excitement, we'll be back in the morning to find out where the hedgehog has gone. I'm thinking the Maldives. I'm in the Midlands with Joan the Hedgehog Woman, looking for her radio-tagged hedgehog, who's been out all night, the dirty stop-out. In my expert opinion, we seem to be in a field. Perfect hedgehog habitat, so you can imagine a very robust hedgehog population out here. I'm imagining it, yes. The tower hedgehog appears to be in this garden, uh, okay. so let's let's try and you go first. Find him. It's like an episode of Midsummer Murders or something, yeah. isn't it? See, it might have died of loneliness. Oh, Julian! Or broken heart. Well, we have to consider can, these can, things. Can we look on the bright side? Can't promise you a happy ending. No, you no. Know, honestly, is this an old TV show? <laughs> no, it's specifically designed for this. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's oh, seen now. better days, actually. <laughs> I'm getting the strongest signal from near that shed. He's near. He's in the hedgehog house. Brilliant. Brilliant. So lots of nest material. Yes. And there's our hedgehog. Oh, I'm so pleased. Do you want to pick him up, Joan? Reunite yourself. I'll probably get pretty cool. Yeah, that's oh. oh. There he is. A happy ending. He knows as well, look, his pickles are flat. Really? Yeah, you can tell by the smell. He re recognises yeah, you. That, yes. I mean, he's going to hibernate soon, isn't he? I should think Would so. Would that be um, where he might do it? Yeah, this would be a, a perfect Probably. place for him. He's found a nest site from which he can go and explore and become a wild animal, which is what mm, all your wants about. What we want, yes. He's no fool, is he? Oh, look at that. The only fools here seem to be us. He could have roamed through Walsall last night, but the clever thing has discovered a purpose-built home just feet from where he was released. We've been outsmarted by a hedgehog. He's ready to go back to bed. I think you need to say your goodbyes. There you go. Do people follow you around the supermarket saying, oh, do you like this now? Hedgehogs. <laughs> No, because they don't know what hedgehogs smell like, do they? Well, I do now. It's, it's a smell I'll never forget. Think how many hedgehogs you've saved over the years. There's thousands of hedgehogs owe their lives to this woman. <laughs> Sleep tight and good luck, Mr. Hedgehog. And don't bother writing or tweeting. Richard will remove the radio tag before our hedgehog hibernates. We don't want his slumbers interrupted by the shipping forecast. After dragging myself away from the lovely Joan, I'm making a short trip north to Litchfield in Staffordshire, 
to meet Kate McRae, who's fanatical about our feathered friends. Now, I like to feed and watch the birds in my garden, but Kate's taken twitching to a whole new level. Her garden has more cameras than the Big Brother house, and she broadcasts the goings-on here live on the internet. Kate! Hello. Hello. I've heard about you, and I've heard about the goings-on <laughs> in your garden. Nice to meet you. Um, will you show me around? Okay, come on. <laughs> There's things I'm not spotting, I'm there sure. There are lots of things you're not spotting. And that big right. bird box up there. Yes, the bird box up there is where we have a great tit family and nine chicks. Nine? Yes, they're a week old at the moment and you can see that there's a cable that runs all the way down here and that leads all the way back to my office. So in my office I can see exactly what's going on inside that nest box. As if by magic, two men arrive who have permits to put rings on Kate's great tits. Nice work if you can get it. The man in a fleece. <laughs> nice to meet you. Who are you? <laughs> nice place. Let me go. Who are ben you? Norman. Hi. How are you? Are you a ring man? I am a ring man. Show me what you mean. Apparently it's not just for decoration. Bird ringing helps keep track of their numbers. How many in there? Certainly six. I know nine hatched, so, but obviously they don't always all survive. How many left? I'm not sure. Well, I lost count. I lost count. <laughs> Yes, nine chicks are present and correct. So the ring doesn't hurt the chick at all. Fits just nicely on the leg. That's fine. So if you just hold your hands out like, like that. Oh, oh no. look. Calling us on Jeffrey. Okay. Jeffrey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make any tit jokes. Because <laughs> it would be unseemly. Sorry, I'm hogging the babies no, here. I've got okay. three. They're nothing like Ken Dodd. <laughs> Which one's Ken? Well, they're all little mini Kens. We are the In this case, it's okay for me to hold the baby chicks for a little while. It helps to keep them warm before they return to the nest. But if the parents come back and notice the babies are gone, they may abandon them. We need to get them back in there as quickly as possible. Now we need to see the mother go back in. <sighs> I'm praying that Jeffrey and his Ken Dodd brothers are okay. Here comes the male now, he's got the broadest tribe. Was so traumatised now. I do feel quite traumatised actually. <laughs> what we could do is nip inside now and we'll have a look inside that nest box up in my office. Check okay. on their welfare, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to see. There we are, filling all those little beaks, all those little lives we held when we were outside. So they've recovered from our disturbance. Yeah, and they don't seem any worse to wear. Well, I could watch this all night. That's a relief then, but I've got other plans for Kate. I want to coax her out of the garden into the fields where something big and hairy and very, very shy is waiting. What would you most like to have a look at live in I'd those woods? I would love to see my badger set live. Me too. Can you show me where these badgers are? I would love to take you into the woods, Julian. Okay, if you're not the first. <laughs> Little does Kate know, but when we go down to the woods, she's in for a big surprise. Some high-tech wizardry to show her wildlife in a way she's never seen it before. So you can see that whole bank is littered with holes. Those are all the badger set so entrances. It's badger heaven, it is, isn't it? It is. But it they're is proper badger. wild badgers, aren't they? They're not the sort that are habituated. No, definitely not. This is a very quiet private site and they're not used to humans around at all. So I've come down to try and watch them, but I've never seen them. Unlike other badgers I've seen, these are totally wild and incredibly wary of any disturbance. They won't come out if they sense danger, much like a gay footballer. So if there was one thing you'd like to see here, what would it be? 
I would love to be able to see a bigger picture of these, this set and to be able to watch these creatures as they come out at night. Well, Katie, I can make your dreams come true. It's none other than Justine Evans, world-famous wildlife camera woman who has fearlessly filmed lions attacking elephants in Africa and Maureen shoplifting in the ball ring, just using the available moonlight. Now this is a very special camera. It's a starlight camera. It intensifies light. It means we don't have to use bright white lights down on the badger set and we can film in darkness. Wow. Just using the light of the moon. Wonderful. It's very rare. There's very few of these in the world. It's military technology that's been adapted for filming wildlife. What could go wrong? Right. No. Wonderful. <laughs> no, exciting. Them, then. Good luck down there. Thank you. Excellent. Well, she seems very nice. She does. Justine is going to set up a hide near the badger's set and use her camera to send pictures to a screen that Kate and I can watch, if we can find somewhere appropriate. Where's a private member's club when you need one? It's like some kind of contraceptive to me. Mind your face, Kate. Oh, what? Sweet. Well. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh no. Are you in there? Are you in there? <laughs> oh, ow. <laughs> Is nobody just laughing? <laughs> Is there enough room in there for me too? You know I'm going to have a nap. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad, is it? We need a ground sheet, say. What would my mother say, me showing a tent to the complete stranger? She'd be very concerned for my virtue. But as the night draws in, let's hope the badgers come to the party. I've been in a cheap tent for the last two hours with Kate, a nature nut, who's keen to see the badgers at a wild set she's found. We have a live feed from camera goddess Justine Evans. She's hoping that the badgers won't be spooked by her nifty starlight camera, which can film by moonlight. So far, not a lot has happened. Is this what you expected? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. You're very easily pleased. Years or more. 
Then we notice that some of the badges are like Harry Styles, friskier than the rest, and realize something very exciting. These are young cubs. Usually only one dominant female in the clan will breed, so all the cubs are likely to have the same mother. It was getting to be late. I thought I was gonna see any and suddenly they all popped out. It's very babyish now. Yeah, now we can see them up close. It's obvious that they're youngsters. So I told you a few weeks ago. You'll be sitting in the field with me watching live matches. You wouldn't have believed them, would you? I must have been I don't think I would have. It's quite a surreal experience. It's a dream come true for both of us. <laughs> I've had a ball with the wholesome Kate and her badges, but I must move on to pastures new. So I'm up at the dawn and driving to Stowe Mary's, a wild corner of Essex, to meet Russell Savory. He's picking me up in one of his cars, and it turns out he's worked in motorsports for 35 years. So how can this petrol head possibly be a nature nut? Just one of the surprises of today, I think. I've never got in a yellow car before. Uh, first time for everything. Oh. Russell shoots off, much to my dismay. My smile is a little forced, my celebrity hairstyle in tatters. And when we arrive at his workshop, I am deeply concerned. There we are. Do you know what I noticed? How rough and gnarled your little hands are. Uh -huh. Look, you could you need a bit of moisturizer up here. I've got some in my clutch bag. I'll rub it in for you. You're so kind. You're welcome. Russell tells me he came to this ghostly World War I airfield six years ago. An ideal spot to run his business. But soon he realized these magical 100 acres were a haven for all things wild. And Russell's head was turned. Russell began spending less time under the bonnet and more time in the bush, photographing the array of wondrous wildlife all around him. Yes, dear viewer, Russell became a nature nut. After the frightful yellow vroom vroom arrangement, Maureen and I appear to be in some kind of milk cart, going no faster than Christopher Biggins on a fun run. And Russell's sensitive nature is beginning to reveal itself. Oh, yeah, that's great. If we put that there for you. There you go. Check it out in the mirror, ain't ya? Hey? Little fella. The wagtail doesn't seem to mind his Essex twang. It's not alone. He has stunning barn owls living in deserted buildings and equally rare and charming little owls. My nature nut places mealworms on posts to attract them. I'm quite tempted myself. Russell loves photographing the owls and wants me to have a go. Oh, oh we got a nice one there. Back to my calendar. Hairs live here too, if you please. This is moving its head. Oh, it's got very big ears. Quite a big brute of a thing. Russell's love of this place and the animals that live here is tangible and infectious. Oh, look, we have a snake. Oh. What sort of snake was that? And with a grass snake. Lovely slow one. Oh, it is a lovely one. As the day flies by, I discover that Russell and I share a common passion for a rarely seen little animal. The water vole. They are fast disappearing largely because of loss of habitat and reintroduced mink that hunt them. Three years ago, Russell built a pond, and now it's brimming with life, including three families of water voles. He tempts them into range of his camera with apples, but he thinks these alleged vegetarians may also have a taste for something meatier. Some experts think they occasionally go for snails, fish, and even frog's legs. Time to put my kitchen drag on. 
Hello and welcome to Cooking for Water Voles here in my novelty kitchen where the air is thick with grease. Now we know they like apples, that has been tried and tested, but what about our old friend frog's legs? Well, they've got nice little hands, they like to sit up and hold their food, don't have to be too finely chopped, place this also in a container, pick up, take to young Russell, and we'll take it from there. One idea is that pregnant females needing more protein may eat meat, and as they breed all summer long, now is a perfect time to test that theory. If nothing else, this should tempt them into the range of our cameras. I can almost see your builder's bum. Almost. I'm doing my best to keep it out of the way. I'm averting my eyes. Yeah. With the table set, it's my turn to dish up the main course. I'm doing very well, Russell. Well, yeah, let's it to the tussock. But silver service has never been my forte, and certainly not on a slippery slope. I'm a nervous wreck. You're not falling, I promise. That's it. Tip it on. Lovely. It's right upside down. That's it. With the vegetarian option safely served, the meat dish follows. Perfect. Cock on, sir. Russell seems to be getting over familiar. I get to see one. So do I. Do they know we're here? Surely they do. They pick up on the vibrations and things. I'll try not to vibrate them. Absolutely, yeah. There's a water bowl there. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Just keep scanning the bank. You just have to keep very quiet. Yeah, I see he comes out. That's his there. I can see it. We are, we are going to have to be very quiet now. Yeah, true. These are the largest of the vole family, and as rodents, you can see why they're also known as water rats. That is it. Which is why the water vole in The Wind in the Willows is called Ratty. I can't believe how close we are. It's fantastic, isn't it? You know, apple. Straight to the apple. Yeah, first apple. I know it's not the definitive answer, but this water vole shows no signs of eating meat. Maybe it isn't pregnant, or perhaps she is a he. It can be difficult to tell sometimes. But it passed the time. Thank you very much. Now you're welcome. It's great to share this with people. That's what I enjoy. Thank you for sharing your water voles. <laughs> Tempting as it is to stay in Essex and give Russell a full body exfoliation, I've heard of another nature nut in need of my attention. I'm heading to Tyne and Weir to meet a nature nut called Kevin O'Hara. What could an ex-miner from Tyneside and a camp comic from Kent possibly have in common? The answer is otters. Now, I've seen captive otters like these, but I've never seen one frolicking in the wild, and I'm rather keen to. Thirty years ago, they were practically extinct. Now, there are an estimated 13,000 in the UK. A hunting ban and cleaner rivers have allowed them to bounce back. Kevin is happy to spend most of his free time hanging out by his local riverbanks just to get a glimpse of a disappearing otter rump. But he's never been able to film them. So my plan is to help Kevin capture some great footage of these beautiful creatures in the wild. Hello, are you Kevin? I am. You and must be Julian. I am Julian. Pleased to meet you. It doesn't look like a likely otter spot. No, it doesn't. But uh, I think you'll be surprised. It's, it's uh, Are we going for a bike ride? Yeah, I thought we'd go a bit off-road and 
Hold a bit more grim. Oh, you know how to show me a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It takes me back. Oh. I almost feel like a local. Our otter quest starts in Sunderland, near what was once an old coke works, belching smoke into the sky. Since it was closed in 1986, nature has given the waterways an enema. It's now clean as a whistle, and Kevin says the otters are starting to return. Today, fish, some of the otters will feed on anything that can get the teeth into the room. Flat marks. Rucks. That's... Really? Yeah, rucks. They're not fussy, are they? Well, they'd be too shy to come, you know, right into a city like this. They're good at staying out the way, that's the key thing with an otter. If they don't want to be seen, they can just lie in the side, perfectly still, with the nose and the eyes and the ears above the water. So if you can't see them, how do you know they're here? Who? Mm. Do you want to see some? Well, you've just given gifts. <laughs> <laughs> well, they make all good contributions to those keep the sample prepared. How do you know this comes from an otter and not a Pekingese? Because <laughs> I would have walked straight yeah. past that and been none the wiser. The key thing is what's in them. There's little tiny fish bones undigestible to rotters. They have a very quick digestive system. It goes in one end and comes out the other end very quick. It's a very unique smell that rotters have. It's not offensive. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you only live once. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, it's not unpleasant. So they like jasmine tea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, new cut here as well, I reckon. It may smell like tea, but I'm not in the mood for a brew. I've got an awful habit of spending time with people picking up their accent. So it may, really? may be late to late, late, I'll be speaking like that. Maybe too late, that late. Okay. We haven't seen otters here, but Kevin assures me we will see them in the Tyne, in the throb of Newcastle. And I've got a surprise waiting for him there. I've got a terrible saddle sore <laughs> since I met you. It doesn't get more urban than this. But Kevin says he sees Geordie otters regularly at a certain bend in the river. He'll be telling me he's got a 28-inch waist next. Still, it's a bit of fresh air for Warwick, my surprise wildlife cameraman. Although I use the word man lightly in Warwick's case. He wears XXL clothes, although he's not XXL. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Warwick. Hello. This yeah, is Kevin here. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure yeah. to meet you. Yeah, uh, picked a good spot, I certainly know that. Should we take the weight off our sling backs? I think we should. I'm enjoying Kevin's company, and Warwick's doing his best. But without sight of an otter, I'm feeling deeply unfulfilled. Well, sorry to say it, guys, but that's the end of the light for us. So maybe we've got to go. Well, we can stay, but there won't be anything to see. No, we too got to see them, no. Don't blame yourself, Kevin. I won't. Maybe we'll catch a glimpse of shoal coal on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Standing at a bus stop eating a bag of chips. <laughs> I'm as disappointed as Janet Street Porter at the National Elocution Awards. But I'm determined to capture wild otters on film for Kevin. So I'm taking him to the other end of the country to meet, shall we say, a more reliable otter enthusiast. He sees otters regularly and he has the photos to prove it. I'm searching for the elusive otter with my Geordie chum Kevin, so I'm decamping to the River Stour. We're off to Blandford Forum in Dorset, where my next nature nut, Stuart Cannon, assures me we're guaranteed satisfaction. Stuart is a retired trout farmer and uses all his spare time to take lovely photos of otters. Look! Kevin and I are positively bursting with excitement. So this is a part of the country called the Southwest, 
but they're not as hard as the northeast. Sure. Are you excited? I might not be able to control them. They want to wear it and where they are. They're just fantastic. Stuart. St Hi. This is Kevin. Hi. Good morning. Hi, How are you? Kevin. Nice to see you. We've come a long journey. Hello. <laughs> Desperate for a sniff of an otter. A sniff of an otter? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a really good area because we've got a lovely view right the way down. Why don't but we split up and go and start looking different That's places. a good idea. Yeah. yeah. We all split up and then if anybody sees anything, we give someone a whistle or whatever. A secret <laughs> password. A secret password? What's that going to be? You who? <laughs> <laughs> Operation Otter is well underway. Take a walk at you. Yeah, I will do. Okay. Give me a shout if you see anything. Don't talk to any strange men. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them peeled, as they say. Okay. With my crack team in place, surely it's only a matter of time. Have you seen out like yet? Roger. No, I haven't seen anything yet, like. Listen up, chaps. I'm just going further downstream to see if cameraman Mark has got anything. Or out, as you might say. Are you going to be all right on your own? I do hope not. <laughs> Won't be long. Warwick is busy shopping for caftans, so I'll make do with Mark Payne Gill. Mark is the linchpin in Operation Otter. He usually films animals in exotic locations, so he should be at home under the Blanford Bypass. Mark. Hello. Hello. This is a, a hopeful spot. Thank you. Uh, well, we've all split up along the bank in various spots to, you know, treble our chances. Yeah. Oh, there's something on the water there. Oh, look. Right there, to the left of your camera. It was an otter. As soon as I arrive. Yeah. Look, there, 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 there is. There is. Yeah. Go ahead. Fancy me seeing it. I saw an otter's... Rump. Oh, there it is. There's it's there's its head. Yeah, yeah. If whatever he's catching is just coming out to eat and then go down catching more. But I can't see what it is. It's too far away at the moment. Well, haven't you got a zoom lens? I do. I've got a bigger zoom lens which I need to put on in a second, actually. There he goes. There he is. Yeah, no, he's busy. Nice. You were telling me you've got the wrong lens on. Um, Something you'd say, Maureen. <sighs> I spotted an otter. Yoo-hoo, boys. Roger. Yoo-hoo, Julian. Quick, come over here, there's an otter. Okay, we're on our way. Wow, I'm so excited. Mission accomplished. Come on, Looks quick. Like he's eating. Look, look, right in the middle of the river. I can see it's that. an otter. <laughs> can you see it? Oh, yeah, look at that. It's an otter, isn't it? It is, yes. definitely. Who do you think spotted it first? Oh, it must be you. Me. It was me. <laughs> and had I not been here, no one would have spotted it. Excellent. Brilliant. Oh, Unfortunately, Mark's got the wrong lens on his camera. Oh, that's no good. That's no good. <laughs> Change lenses then, quick. Right. How long does it take you? It'll take me a minute. Shouldn't you have the other lens in your pocket ready? Right, yes, I have one right here. Okay, so hurry up. Look, it's right there. As quick as you can, please. Which is the worst way to do this. We didn't know there's trouble with Warwick. Oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, that wasn't good. Oh, it's a big one, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's definitely a meal. The you should tell. What's she doing now? It's all right, fair enough. Oh, don't need that bit. Okay, well, I said a minute. Yeah. Times it by ten. Are you a professional no cameraman? Or you work experience? No, I just work experience, yes. Can this little teeth be in? Poor old Mark. I know he has to concentrate, but I can't resist it. He should just about be coming up, Mark. There he is. Well, he's coming closer, Mark. You might need to change lenses again. <laughs> There we go, look at that, fantastic. Did you get that? Yeah, on it. Well done. Look, lovely, stay there, stay there. Oh, fantastic. It doesn't get any better than that, way. When Mark does switch lenses, he gets this incredible footage. You can see what makes otters such supreme hunters. They can dive to 14 meters and stay underwater for up to eight minutes.
and the bubbles on the surface are a sign that the otter is hunting below. Any prey flushed out is sensed by its whiskers and the otter grabs it. Having had his fill, the otter heads for the bank. I should think I'll be up for an award for this. <laughs> you got any awards, Mark? No. <coughs> I'm only kidding. Mark's clearly a great cameraman, and he has a special eye for the birds. The big thing down there. The otter will have him as well. <laughs> we're already well ahead of Warwick, Mark. Don't think we're going to go on and on about you dropping your lens. <laughs> no. For a moment. We wouldn't do that, would we? Should we go and look somewhere else then, girls? Well, you're the spotter, so you should go you first. Go first. Yeah. You first. Yeah, you go first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've got your eye in now. I have. I'm thrilled with myself. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Having fulfilled my promise to Kevin, it's time to reveal my surprise for Stuart. But before I can, he reminisces about his favourite autumn encounter. One day we came down and the river was a lot higher and we had a, a mum and two cubs and they were literally right under our feet. They were so close, just a privilege. And they didn't mind you? No, not, couldn't care less. Well, you wouldn't mind, nice man like Stuart, would you, Maureen? <laughs> I, I feel the urge to sit on your lap and have you well, read me a bedtime story. You're getting, yeah, you're getting a bit close for comfort there, Julian. I suppose it's out of the question. That's <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, so, you got that close to them? Yeah. Well, what are you doing this afternoon? Nothing that I know of. We're free, aren't we, Maureen? Yeah. Look, we could take you somewhere where you could maybe have a kind of close encounter. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, well, that would really be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? And we'll take Kevin with us. Oh, yes. We need to go yeah. and find him. Find Kevin. I think he's standing outside the pie shop waiting for it to open. <laughs> I've taken the boys to one of the UK's leading otter sanctuaries, just an hour away. A very special otter called Topaz lives here, and Stuart's treat is to meet her. Hello, little one. Topaz is one of the few tame otters in the UK that can be fed by hand, which is astonishing because otters are category one dangerous animals like lions or Piers Morgan. I've heard tales of them having your fingers off so she's about seven, and she was rescued. She was orphaned cub. I want to touch you. You're <laughs> that is just amazing. Stuart's getting all emotional, so I need to give him a shoulder to lean on. But you'll notice my fingers are well hidden. I'm no mug. She's very friendly. Isn't she lovely? Poor you. What are you doing? You want this trap, don't you? Yeah, we know what you're after. <laughs> Look at you. Topaz had two cubs at the beginning of the year, but they're less trusting. Go a bit down here, see if they come closer. Look at me now. If I don't get a bravery award after this, then I give up. So how are you feeling, Julian? Did you expect to be this close up? No, me neither. Look into their eyes. Yep. How are you feeling? Just amazing. Just so lovely to be that close and have something trust you. Mm. To be trusted by a small animal is just amazing. I'm filling up. Otters galore and two new best friends. I hope they've enjoyed our time together as much as I have. There was a boy, a very strange and chatty boy. Join me next time on Nature Nuts when I'll be hunting high and low for more wondrous beasties, getting wet with Britain's largest carnivore, and discovering which adorable creatures share my own luxury home. Until then, goodbye, and stay nutty. Learning to care for patients that bite. Tomorrow, 8 New Vet School continues. Thursday at 8.30, our celebs continue their training in their new sheepdog herding careers, new flock stars. Next, though, this evening, sticking with the countryside, we have a case for Barnaby and Nelson in Midsummer Murders.
nationwide. Proud supporters of...